Hi, I'm going to be drawing a f some free body diagrams for this physical situation. Uh, we have block one on top of block two, which is on top of the floor, and they're all at, uh, at rest. And I actually want to draw a free body diagram for each of these individually, a free body diagram for block one, a free body diagram for block two. And the important lesson here is how to show uh, the existence of a action reaction pair or an application of Newton's third law. So if you'd like, go ahead and pause the video, draw a free body diagram for uh, block one, a free body diagram for block two, and use appropriate notation to show the existence of one or more action reaction pairs. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start with block one because that one's a little bit simpler. So uh, block one, uh, as usual, I'm going to start with a weight force. So we have the weight force exerted by the earth on block one. And then we have uh, something preventing block one from plummeting to the center of the earth. That would be block two. So there's a normal force exerted by block two on block one directed up. Uh, equal in strength. That's why it's at rest. Now it's tempting to think about the floor as what's holding up block one, but that's not uh, correct in terms of the physics. Whenever we're talking about the source of the force, it has to be the proximate cause. So block two is directly acting upon block one, so that's who to whom we attribute that, uh, that force. Okay, so that's it for block one. Uh, block two is a little bit more complicated. So block two Again, we can start with the weight force. Uh, I'm going to draw, I drew uh, block two a little bit bigger, so I'll just go ahead and assume that it has a greater mass and therefore a greater weight force. So I'm going to draw a big force vector down, or relatively big, weight force exerted by the earth on block two. And um, so here's where Newton's third law comes into play. Because there's a normal force by block two on block one, uh, there has to be an equal and opposite force of block one on block two. So uh, that force would be over here. You can draw it end to end. Some people like to do that. I, I, I tend not to. Um, so I draw an arrow opposite in direction, equal in length to that one. And I just reverse the subscripts. So it'd be normal force by block one on block two. And then to show that I recognize that this is a Newton's third law situation, action, reaction, same type, reverse subscripts, reverse direction. And so I draw it with a dotted line showing that those are action, reaction, connect the, connect the two with a dotted line. Okay, and then uh, something is preventing block two from plummeting to the center of the earth. Uh, that thing is the floor. So the floor exerts an upward force, which has to counteract both of these. So that's why I'm drawing it particularly long. It's the uh, equal to the sum of these two. And so that would be the normal force of the floor on block two. Okay, so that's it for these free body diagrams. Now, certainly action reaction uh, exists for all of these forces that don't have dotted lines connected to them. If I was drawing a free body diagram for the floor, uh, then this one would have an action reaction pair uh, um, in existing, but uh, we don't, so uh, we don't have any dotted lines there. And same thing if I were to draw a free body diagram for the earth, uh, these might have action reaction pairs included in, in such a free body diagram. Okay, so that's it. Um, so I'll see you next time.